Shoulder flexion occurs in the sagittal plane, so you would line up your goniometer in the sagittal plane as well. The axis of the goniometer will be at the glenohumeral joint directly under the acromion, and the stationary arm will be in line with the trunk, while the movable arm is in line with the humerus. Normal range of motion for shoulder flexion would be 0 to 170 degrees. When measuring range of motion, always read the outer black numbers of degrees of the goniometer that line up with the large black arrow. Have the patient in a seated position, in a seated upright position with their feet, knees, and hips all at 90 degrees. Ask the patient to actively raise the shoulder forwards and observe for muscle contractions, signs of exertion, or any abnormal substitutions. Feel for the patient's acromion and place the axis directly under the acromion process. Record the starting degree range of motion. Ask the patient to perform the same movement as before while moving the movable arm with the humerus and complete the degree range of motion. At a complete range of motion, the therapist should notice a firm infield due to the ligaments of the shoulder being stretched. Rachel's full range of motion for shoulder flexion is 150 degrees. When measuring shoulder extension, you line up the goniometer on the arm the same as you would for shoulder flexion. Have the patient in a seated, seated upright position with their feet, knees, and hips all at 90 degrees. Ask the patient to actively raise the shoulder backwards and observe for muscle contractions, signs of exertion, and any abnormal substitutions. Feel for the patient's acromion and place the axis directly under the acromion process. Record the starting degree range of motion. Ask the patient to perform the same movement as before and move the movable arm in line with the humerus. At a complete range of motion, the therapist should notice a firm infield due to the ligaments of the shoulder being stretched. Rachel's full range of motion for shoulder extension is 60 degrees. To measure shoulder flexion, the patient should be standing upright. Ask the patient to actively raise the shoulder forwards. If they can perform this motion against gravity, they would receive a grade of 3 or fair. If the patient cannot move their limb at all, palpate to feel for a muscle contraction. Palpate the muscle belly of the biceps brachii or the anterior deltoid to feel for the contraction. If there is a muscle contraction felt by the therapist, the patient will receive a grade of 1 or trace. If there is no muscle contraction at all, the patient will receive a grade of 0. As the patient performs this motion, watch for the signs of exertion or any abnormal substitutions. If the patient can perform this motion, ask them to raise their arm to about 90 degrees. Once at 90 degrees, instruct them to hold it there. Stabilize the shoulder proximally and apply resistance distally at the elbow without crossing the joint. The muscles acting in this motion are coracobrachialis, biceps brachii, and anterior deltoid. If the patient is able to tolerate resistance without problems, they would receive a grade of a 5 or normal. If the patient can only tolerate minimal resistance, they would receive a grade of 4 or good. If the patient cannot actively perform the motion against gravity, instruct the patient to lay on their side so that they're not performing the motion with gravity. If they can now perform this motion while laying down, they will receive a grade of 2 or poor. To measure shoulder extension, the patient should be standing upright. Ask the patient to actively raise the shoulder backwards. As the patient performs this motion, watch for any muscle contraction, signs of exertion, and any abnormal substitutions. If the patient can perform the motion, ask them to raise their arm to about mid-range and hold it there. Stabilize the shoulder proximally and apply resistance distally at the elbow without crossing the joint. The muscles acting in this motion are triceps brachii and posterior deltoid. If the patient is able to tolerate this without problems, they would receive a grade of a 5 or normal. If the patient cannot actively perform this motion against gravity, instruct them to lay on their side as to eliminate gravity. If they can now perform this motion while laying down, they will receive a grade of 2 or 4.